think it might stand with my honor to marry my sister's subject. It is true that an earl is not a prince. Surely there can be no greater honor than to match yourself with a nobleman by whom you inherit such a kingdom as England. I have such inheritance by blood, regardless of who I marry or do not marry. <laughs> I'm joined now uh, by uh, Josie Rook. Josie, first of all, an incredible story, more because Mary was only 18 when she came from France, but she understood statecraft, as did her older cousin, Elizabeth. So you have these experienced women who are both yet vulnerable, and you show that. Yeah, and in many ways, Mary, I think, taught Elizabeth a lot. So Elizabeth really, as Margot shows in the film, was much more cautious and nervous in that period of her life. She's not this kind of iron queen that we associated with. She would hesitate. Later in her life, that became strategy. But Mary had the great elegance of the French court and the ability to really sway and understand the complex politics that she chose to put herself in. Mm -hmm. You know, they could have married her off as another puppet princess somewhere else in Europe. And she went, no, I'm going to go back and take the reins of Scotland. And indeed, it plays out very much as a feminist drama because, of course, there are you know, the, the regents everybody around about who's vying for power and whispering in their ear. But these two women, you make very much the central part of the drama. Yeah, and it was a period of history where you've got figures like John Knox, played by David Tennant in the movie, um, saying that he feels that women are a monstrous regiment if they try and become queens, that they're against nature and against God. You know, there's an ideological bent to what was being done as well as a religious one to speak against them. But yeah, the feminist thing is interesting. So I'm definitely a feminist and a lot's been made of that. But at the same time, I think a key point for me is that women don't often get to make period dramas. Yeah. So I'm naturally going to look in that direction. That's just my identity. And, yeah. and I'll talk to you about whether women are getting to make dramas in the, in the cinema enough or it. But one of the other gripes about the film, one of the gripes about the film, I should say, was that there was colorblind casting, something we're used to in the theater now, yeah. but yet, you know, having uh, Gemma Chan as Bess of Hardwick and also having Adrian Lester as a, a Mary, a Elizabeth's agent at the Scottish court was seen as somehow outrageous. Yeah, and but not that Margot Robbie is Australian or that Saoirse is Irish or that Jack Loudon is Scottish playing English. You know, think about Adrian Lester. I mean, he's one of our greatest classical actors. He grew up, was born, grew up 40 minutes from William Shakespeare. You know, I mean, he knew more about Elizabethan Tudor history and the Stuarts than any other person on that set. He's actually overqualified to play that part, as is Gemma to an extent. And I just feel like it's about to change. Yeah. You know, it will, it will necessarily be startling to some people who've not seen it before, but it changed so quickly in theatre. Some uh, uh, of the other comments, and you've made them yourselves, was that, was that you know, the very thing about this was about fertility. It was about an heir to the throne. And yet there was a problem even showing the fact that Mary had a period and you had to fight for that. It was, it was a discussion, I should say. And, and, you know, some people were very pro it, some people were quite startled by it. But again, it's just something that we don't see. The craziest thing, I did an interview in America and somebody said that must have been a very difficult scene to shoot. And I'm like, no, it was basically <laughs> six women who get periods knowing what to do. So it's a kind of odd, I think, you know, again, it will just, it's one of the few positive contexts in which you can use normalization. I think we're just going through a period of change. Well, you talk about normalization, but of course, the, a little of this is a fantasy, the idea that these two women met. But let's show a clip indeed where they do. Do not play into their hands. Your heart has more within it than the men who counsel you. You would do well to watch your words. I will not be scolded by my inferior. You're inferior. Like the Schiller play, Maria Stewart, where the two meet, you have the meeting. And, and you've told uh, you, that story in a very, very dramatic, it's a psychological drama. Yeah. It was Margot's last day of shooting, Saoirse's first day of shooting, and you had yeah. create, how did you create that intensity? I mean, I, Saoirse was so deep in the character. Yeah, I mean, Saoirse had wanted to play his part since she was 18, so she'd been preparing for a long time. And, you know, she's a magnificence, just of acting and of person. And the idea you can turn up and that's your first day was incredible. We kept them apart. So they didn't see each other. We did rehearsal, but they didn't see each other in their full looks, as it were, as those two women, until Saoirse rips down the curtain in that scene and, and, and sees Margot. And, and, you know, it's a bit of a theatre technique, but and it was something we all kind of came to quite spontaneously. Let's, let's keep the thrill and the tension of that in that moment. And we could shoot it so you've got both their close-ups at the same time. So that reaction you see is the first take, here's this other woman reaction. You um, have had such a long run at the Donmar, and I know you've decided that this is your, you're no longer going to be the artistic director of the Donmar. Yeah. And I wonder now if you've been captivated uh, by film. What I feel is that there is such extraordinary potential in, and it's going to sound a bit mad, but it's such a new medium. 
you know, theatre's mm. 2,000 years old, and, and the possibility, now I've done it for a first go, the possibility that I see in it artistically is gigantic to me. I'm never going to not do theatre. I, I, yeah. I love it, you know. But, you know, where they're having massive strides, you know, you, know, female, you know, female directors and artistic directors of theatres all over the world, you know, but where there have not been massive strides is women directing big blockbusters and, you know, big budget movies. There just hasn't, and why is that? Yeah, it makes your heart sink, doesn't it, to look at those numbers? Yeah. Um, and, and it's hard for me to say that because I've been given this massive opportunity, right? So I need to acknowledge that. Like somebody said, come and do a really big film for your first go. I have a feeling that if I air toward the positive and say, in theatre, this is what it was like when I started, that's what film looked like. You know, to me, to walk mm -hmm. onto a film set and see that it's not a particularly diverse place. It's a very male place, it's a very white place. Mm -hmm. But to know in theatre how quickly that changed over 10 years with just some key decisions, I feel like it's a very doable thing. So as much as you want to go, these numbers are terrible, you also want to go, look at our ancient medium that we reformed within 10 years. We've got further to go, but it's got to be possible, right? Josie, thanks very much indeed.